We got a new matchmaker here in ROH. We got a new man out here to call the shots in ROH. A man that's busting his ass in this ring. Blood, sweat, and tears just like all of us. A man that's going to restore honor to this company. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new matchmaker, Nigel McGinnis. What? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lift off. It's a ragtag fugitive fleet this afternoon. <laughs> we are the Battlestar Galactica of Bump and Cell. <laughs> Greetings, good afternoon, how you doing? Welcome. 24 till the top of the hour, this is Beyond Ringside. Fast Eddie Lane live behind the control panel. Maybo, come on in, Mark Bowman. What up? I got some seaweed stained tacos trick. Oh, you actually said it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming in tag team part of the Wicked Nemesis. Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? Sick as hell, but holding up. And I've got a condom on my microphone, therefore I am practicing safe speaking this afternoon. So, hey, what the hell? Drunk as hell, but no throwing up. No. Halfway home, and my page is still blowing up. <laughs> you had a chance to hear the opening, uh, the open, the cold open, so to speak, as I like to call it. And technically, that's what it is. From that vantage point, you heard Jay Briscoe making reference to the new ROH matchmaker, which, of course, that episode took place a couple of weeks ago. And I've had a chance to really monitor the situation as they are headed for final battle. By the way, of course, thank you to everybody for listening in on TNT-Radio.net. Thank you for listening in on Ustream, which I'll end up redoing the Ustream feed because I forget to, forgot to hit the button at the first part of the cold open. That's my fault. But from that vantage point, Caprice Coleman, professional wrestling superstar. A lot of you know him from Ring of Honor and especially over in the Mid-Atlantic States area. Uh, is scheduled to join us in 23 minutes here on the show. At 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, we are scheduled to be joined by David Elder, Matt Lavelle, and a number of the fighters scheduled to come out for Strike Hard Productions SHP20, scheduled for this coming Saturday night, December the 8th, at the Zamora Shrine Temple. Looking forward to that. It's going to be a great outing for mixed martial arts in Alabama. I know where that is. Yeah, it's not too far from where you live, Ding Dong. Yeah, buddy. You and your, you and I ain't got nothing else to add today. I'm sorry. Some, 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 some seaweed stained tacos. <laughs> you got to get the Pooch. Thing. Pooch. <laughs> I worry about you, Bowman. But I've actually had a chance to really pay attention over the last couple of weeks. First off, with the step, um, stepping away from the public scenario of Jim Cornette and with everything else going on with Ring of Honor, there was one other little sound bite that has really caught my attention and gentlemen if you'll bear with me for a second I'm going to try to pull it up real quick and I'm Bowman I said pull it up not pull it out Giggity. there you go there's two of them and I'm going to play them both in succession this one first we don't raise the bar ring of honor is the bar and number two ROH is back baby this is ROH and honor lives over the last couple of weeks there have been a couple of things that have popped into my head Remember the speech that was being given Monday night w during the exclusive interview with <clears throat> The Shield and Michael Cole, the comment that was made by Ambrose? We I are, don't know. I mean, as much as, much as I enjoy Dean Ambrose on the mic and everything, as long as they're going to be dressing up like the big boss man junior squad, I don't know if I can deal with that. And two out of three, I like two out of three some guns. Don't get me wrong. Roman Reigns, still out. You know, he's got, the, he's got a good pedigree. Still waiting to see what he's got. But, I mean, I like two out of three of them some guns, but they walk around like the freaking junior big boss, man, calling themselves The Shield. I don't know if they're a TV show star, Michael Chiklis, or something that old broads lock panties with so they don't freaking leak on themselves, but they could have picked a better name. See, that was something that, and if I don't say it now, I know Wicked's going to bring it up. Um, that is something that we did discuss this past Wednesday night on the, on the T To Be Determined show here on TNT Radio. And there were some different names that were bandied about. Well, Bowman, before I bring in Wicked, let me go ahead and ask if it was up to you, what would be the name? What would be a couple of the names that you would pick to go on them? Oh, simple, semen stained tacos. There you go. 
Wicked nemesis. <laughs> no, uh, legit, legitimately though, um, I don't know. Like, I did see where there were some names, and, but I think the shield was the only one I've ever really seen. But, I mean, it just first of all, why are you making them? They they're dressing like they're some sort of paramilitary squad. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't fit the gimmick. It honestly re- it reminds me of freaking um, uh, uh, the Truth Commission from back in the you know the nineties during yeah. the gang wars. Yeah, or it reminds me of when TNA in their early days, uh, when they moved from you know the weekly pay per views where I think they just got on with Fox Sports South or whatever. Right. And and I can't remember who was doing it. I remember there was uh, Onyx uh, that was uh, known you know people definitely in I guess the, the Wild Side Anarchy days, big big buff scary Onyx. Right. Um, it was him. And two other dudes, and they were kind of dressing like, you know, the same way. And just like, bro, not needed, man. So, I mean, what would I call them? I, I don't know. I don't even know if I'd call them anything. I mean, do you have to call them a group? Why does everybody have to be a group? Why does everybody have to, everybody have to be the Nexus? Or, you know, something. Don't come in as a group. Take us, you know, take some of your, you know, upper mid guys and establish them as a group. But just coming in as a group, I said a flaky. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Wicked, come on in. Your thoughts? Uh, the name sucked. Plain and simple. I mean, that's all there was to it. Uh, I had no problem with these guys being grouped together. Uh, the promo was horrible. Uh, Roman Reigns, who was supposed to be the silent giant type, this, this quiet assassin. Uh, was really cheesy in his part of the promo. Uh, and there, there's so many more names we could come up with other than the Shields. And, and we listed some of them on uh, the To Be Determined show this past Wednesday. But uh, this is something that, that they, they had you know good backing behind. The internet wrestling community was behind it. Uh, the whole thing that everybody keeps you know complaining about with WWE is the fact that they don't supposedly push the younger talent they start pushing younger talent and now there's something wrong boo well see here my, my thing is is first of all you, you've you pushed uh, almost a color black well same guy Seth Rollins on NXT which is available to people only if you have Hulu Plus but you know you pushed him as a baby face made him the first champion pushed him as a baby face pretty much since day one he's walked into FCW slash NXT and then now you're gonna just immediately flip him to a heel, stick him with with Dean Ambrose and and Roman Reigns. I mean, you know they you know turned Reigns. They started turning him heel before the whole FCW switch to NXT. They changed it from Layaki to Reigns. Um, it sort of made him almost like, and I think this is what they're trying to do, almost like corporate rock. I think that's maybe what they're going for. Unfortunately. He might have all the athletic ability of The Rock back in his day, but zero charisma. And Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose had a... Oh, crap. David, do me a favor. Hold tight. You could have brought in Cassius Ono, and he would have looked scarier. He would have looked like paramilitary Jesus. But, you know, anybody would... So I wouldn't have brought Seth Rollins in as a heel. I mean, <clears throat> who's going to take a heel with two-toned hair seriously? I mean, look at Micah Taylor. Nobody takes him seriously. Shots fired. But anyway, Eddie, back to what you're saying, what Dean Ambrose said about the whole thing tying into Ring of Honor. Now, there was one other little thing. And this has really got me tickled because I discovered this. Actually, I think I brought it up Wednesday on TBD, right, Wicked, uh, about the cross reference. Because if you notice, remember what I um, remember that last soundbite. This is Ring of Honor, and Honor lives, Jay Briscoe. However, we're about honor. Where honor no longer exists, we're going to step in. Now. For everybody who wants to jump up and down and say conspiracy theory, WWE secretly owns ROH. Is it a pure coincidence that these two comments coincide with each other by a couple of weeks? 
Mark, yeah, your name. Oh, I, I was I was waiting for you to say something. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, that's about the same as you know some conspiracy theory nuts who are on this show who claim that WWE owns TNA. Not naming names, that's the lane. But was it a coincidence? Yes. I mean, plain and simple. But here's the thing: there, the the shield, and it really sickens me to say that every time. I, I want Sam Jackson to show up and just yell at him. Um, <laughs> for for them, they're talking about the honor and the legitimacy of you know it's always you know, that's why they're attacking Ryback you know because there's no honor in what he's getting and all this and I had really I had a giant dissertation written down and I forgot what it was but when they're saying when the Briscoes are talking about honor they're actually talking about the honor that was once Ring of Honor you know it's two totally different things it is just a sorry taco burp there you it, go. Was just, it's, it was just a coincidence and if anybody is jumping and saying conspiracy theory or whatever, they're a wackadoodle. Everybody knows that Ring of Honor is secretly in leagues with TNA. You think ROH is secretly in league with TNA? That was a joke, Eddie. Okay. Joke. Funny. Ha ha. Curiosity. Wicked, come on in. Uh, what, what the heck you want me to say? <laughs> Agree, disagree with what Mark said. Agree, disagree with what I said. There's no conspiracy going on. Uh, WWE owns a, owns a uh, stake in Sinclair Broadcasting, uh, whether it be stocks, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Whether they're using them as a Bush League, startup league, whatever. Uh, WWE doesn't really care what's going on their promo wise I mean some of these guys can barely cut a promo as it is on WWE if they want to steal something about honor etc cetera, etc cetera, that, that's fine but what they're really trying to establish is the fact that uh, heels and baby faces will be open uh, to the shield attacking and with the limited bo- vocabulary that most of these people have and with the fact their writers uh, suck ass uh, sure, they're going to be. Oh well, this sounds good. This is the only way we can tell that you know we're, we're tweeners and uh, we don't care whether your heels are brave faces. So we're going to relate it to honor because that's what they always they think that you know there's no honor among thieves. So if you establish that what some people consider uh, a heel group, other people consider a righteous you know like maybe a vengeful baby face group. Uh, that's their way of saying hey, uh, we don't care. It's the whole thing of me, you know saying, hey, the GCW title, don't care whether you're babyface or heel, you know, me giving an open warning to everybody, but they're not smart enough to come up with something like that, so they say, it's about honor. No, it's not. It's the fact that you guys want to be able to fight and wrestle babyfaces and heels, and they have a limited vocabulary of saying it. Sorry, riders. Yeah, that's something that I've had against WWE for a while, because their writing style has gone to hell in a handbasket. Um, but see, at, the, at the same time, though, they have yet to make any move towards any heels. They're, right now, their main focus is Ryback and, uh, you know, uh, who else did they attack? Uh, at a house show, they actually beat up Epico and Primo, and then they beat up Santino and Justin Gabriel at a house yeah, show. I, I, yeah, I, I saw where they, where they beat up Santino and uh, Justin Gabriel. I don't I didn't... Yeah, I don't remember reading them. I mean, I'm not, you know, just, dis, dis, you know, saying that you're wrong. I, like I said, I just didn't see the one about Epico and Primo. But let's be honest, one minute Epico and Primo are heel, one minute they're face. It's Epico and Primo. Yeah, that's a different thing because the tweener role, so to speak, and I really have begun to hate that word more than anything else. Thank you to Nickelodeon and Disney XD. Um, the overall scenario in play is just there the line has been blurred in so many different directions and it's kind of like where you start on one topic and you go in 93 different directions at the same time and then you finally come back to find a way to tie it all back in together because the heel face scenario is something they don't to a great degree have a problem with in ROH and they don't have that problem in TNA to a great degree there are some characters that blur the line. Let's put this one in perspective right now. Since the return of Davy Richards a couple of weeks ago in Ring of Honor, and yeah, I'm segueing big time. 
Richards has been on a quest, so to speak, to set everything right with everybody. Well, everybody remembers, I think it was last week on RH TV, he tried to talk to Kyle O'Reilly, and then he got blindsided by O'Reilly, and then Bobby Fish, who was supposed to be on, um, you know, on Richard's side, turned around and blindsided um, Richards as well. So they're re- resetting everything to where Davey is supposed to be of a believable babyface. Now, and Mark, I apologize, I know you said that you haven't seen this week's ROH TV. First off, watch it. It's really good. Well, that's why I still have it on the DVR. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's no big deal. You, you guys have, you know, spoiled it before. I mean, not really spoiled it because spoiling would be like, holy crap, what'd you say there for? I mean, I, I mean, I don't care. I'm still going to get around to watching it anyway because I enjoy it. I mean, as crappy as it's been, as, you know, as, it, as, that, as it's been since it's hit Sinclair, I still enjoy watching it. You know, I have to do this, and I said I wasn't going to do this yet, that I was going to wait for it, and I'm not going to wait. We're going nine minutes before the top of the hour live beyond ringside Sunday night. I want to play this, and it's the in case you don't remember, it's the opening statement that McGinnis made after he was announced by Jay Briscoe as being the new matchmaker. Let me ask you a question, Jay. That flag, what does it say? R O H. Right at the top there. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor, right? Honor. That is what this company was built on. That is what we believed in. When I first had the dream of being a professional wrestler, this company didn't even exist. But for better or for worse, it's in this company that my dream became a reality. In this ring with a lot of these guys. Yet, that ring of honor, I don't know where it's gone. I mean, I, I see signs of it. I still see guys coming out here and having the best damn wrestling matches in the world. And that, for me, is a huge part of it. Now, all in all, we're technically three weeks into the new run with Nigel McGuinness as the public, the, um, public matchmaker. Based on what you've seen, in all legitimacy, and normally you wait a month before you ask this question, but I want to ask it now. Based on what you've seen, how would you grade the overall product? Improved, about the same, drop down, A, B, C, D. Bowman. Um, <clears throat> well, to me, it still, it still seems the same. Um, I mean, I haven't really... It's, it's a lot less annoying. And, 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 I, and I'm going to be honest with you, I know he's been on the show and uh, all this and the other, but I've, just, I've never cared for Jim Cornette. On air and off air. Uh, nothing against the guy, you know. Personally, I just there's people who you know in this business do what they do, and they annoy you. They tick you off or whatever, and that's because that's their job. You you like that person, or you just dis- you dislike that person because they've they've done such a good job. You dislike that, and you admit that. You'd be like. Oh, I, I, I hate him. And it's because he does this, this, and this that I hate him, and he's so good at it. But to me, Cornette has always just annoyed me more than, you know, caused anything else. It's just like, you're annoying, you're, you're hackneyed, you're, you know, not old, you're old school, but not, and not even in a good way. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. It's just, I, he didn't really bring anything. I mean, you know, sometimes authority figures just need to be authority figures. They don't necessarily have to thrust themselves into anything major. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's, I mean, it has what? Yeah, I haven't seen anything shocking. You know, I mean, you know, Nigel's made some announcements, or whatever. Have I seen anything shocking that's just grabbed me by the short and curlies and made me go, "Holy crap! Ring of the original Ring of Honor is back!" Ah, no, they haven't. It hasn't. I mean, he's he's played the role well, you know. And, but I've always been a fan of Nigel McGuinness, even when he was doing his run in TNA as, as Des- Desmond Wolf. I'm, I'm always I have been a Nigel McGuinness fan. You know, I was fortunate enough to catch him back when he started in uh, HWA. Well, not really started, but when um, he was in HWA back in Heartland Wrestling Association, uh, Les Thatcher's uh, company. Um, I was fortunate enough to catch him a couple times there. Um, I like his work. I'm not gonna lie, but 
has he done anything right now that has cemented in the short time that cemented you know me back as a staunch and diehard Ring of Honor supporter? No, not really. So I'm gonna say it's a step up from it's an improvement from Cornette, but that's like saying that's like saying an overcooked hamburger. It's a step up from a dog turd. You know, you're going to enjoy this a lot better because it doesn't suck. Right. But it's still not what you want. Wicked Nemesis, come on in real quick. Maybe I'll hit it right on the head. Uh, it is a step up as an upgrade. But, I mean, this is putting a Band-Aid on, a, on an open wound. It's still going to bleed out no matter what. I talked to you guys about this. Cornette was turning Ring of Honor into Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Enough said. It, exactly, exactly. I, I agree. Anybody who, I don't mean to cut you off, Wick, but anybody who was fortunate or unfortunate, you know, because there were some good points and some bad points, but who was around back in the days when Smoky Mountain was running, you know, it's exactly what it was becoming. And you, I, you, you, hit, you, you hit it right there, Wick. It was literally it was becoming Smoky Mountain and definitely getting away from what Ring of Honor was established, you know, back in, what was it, like late, two, uh, or mid-2001, something like that, where it was legitimate. It was it was wrestling. It was taken back to wrestling. It wasn't outrageous angles. And, yeah, they did that, uh, you know, every once in a while, but outrageous angles and stupid gimmicks and everything, it was wrestling, so... And that's something that I think has been almost lost to a great degree. But I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Folks, tell you what, do me a favor. We're going to head to our top of the hour break. And when we come back, we are going to be joined by professional wrestling star Caprice Coleman right here on Beyond Ringside on TNT-Radio.net. Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside. Your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend, Fast Eddie Ray. You got it. On a phenomenal Sunday afternoon, making our way toward a Sunday night, and then some. Welcome to Beyond Ringside. Thank you, Mike Macaroni, for the intro. Always a pleasure to hear the dulcet tones. Ladies and gentlemen, tag team partner Mark Mabo Bowman on board. I've got some tacos left, and uh, I've had some Gatorade, so I've rehydrated the fluid. So if anybody needs some tacos with some of that special special seasoning, just let me know. like to welcome in tag team partner, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. I know we have a wide array of fans. Now, with those, we have some people that, that know the religion. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday night. It's time to go to church. And it is time wrestling church, ladies and gentlemen. And the doors are open. Ladies and gentlemen, we are being joined by a very special guest and actually rejoined, if I may, by professional wrestling superstar, also known as the Redreamer, if my notes are still correct, Caprice Coleman. Welcome back to Beyond Ringside. Great to be back, man. Thanks for having me back on the show. How's everything going? It has been crazy. It has been chaos. Um, it's pretty much about the same from the last time you were on. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sounds about the same. And you managed to bring in, um, of course, right now, you are very well noted for tag team wrestling action, and you've got a uh, very special guest alongside of you in the name of Cedric Alexander, uh, right? I have a special guest. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, people. I am Cedric Alexander, the one and only. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are being joined by the internationally known tag team of CNC right here on Beyond Ringside. It is a great honor to have both of y'all on. First off, Caprice, if I may, it's been a while since we've really had a chance to speak, and I know that you have been a very busy person. Let us know where all you've been hiding at. Uh, basically, man, I've been trying to stay busy. Uh, I'm still doing ministry work. Um, I still have my company that I'm running, and I'm still doing Ring of Honor stuff. And Ring of Honor is keeping us pretty busy. And, uh, but we can always use, you know, other bookings, so we try to keep ourselves busy because the more you're in the ring, the better the better you are at it. And I think uh, the more Cedric and I are in the ring together, the, the more our chemistry gets better. And I believe uh, we have our chemistry pretty pretty good down pat now. We just add to the repertoire. We keep getting better and better. We want to be champions very soon. 
Now, speaking of the repertoire and speaking of tag team action, um, Cedric, if I can go ahead and bring you in right off the bat. Um, you and Caprice, of course, very well known, especially on the national television product known as Ring of Honor, which is broadcast on the Sinclair Broadcast Group. Um, people all oak for the country and then some have had a chance to really become a little bit more familiar with you. But for those who haven't had a chance to do a little bit of background on Cedric Alexander, um, give us the encapsulated version on how you really got involved in pro wrestling. Well, I started wrestling in Charlotte, North Carolina at a school called High Spot Training Academy. I stuck it out on the road there for a, a, about a good year before I really got involved with Ring of Honor. So it was, uh, it was a pretty short road, but still pretty tough at the same time. I'd like to welcome in tag team partner Mark Mabo Bowman. Uh, yeah, uh, two questions. One, um, when you guys were brought into Ring of Honor, or you brought in... I'm not going to say as a one-off, but were you brought in, you know, just for here and there, or were you actually brought in full-time, and did you, you know, expect for you guys to blow up like you have on Ring of Honor? And, and two, does Mark Briscoe smell as weird as he looks? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I, I'm, I'll go ahead and answer the first one. We know, honestly, when Fisk and I were both brought on to Ring of Honor, they, they, they hired us because Ring of Honor had just picked up Sinclair and they were going to be in the South more often than they were in the North. Uh, and so they wanted a team in the South that they felt like, you know, pretty much they could save money on having some guys already down in the South so when they come down there. Uh, but Cedric and I, we took the opportunity to try to make the best out of it. And uh, so they hired us on to a contract then or whatever, but then, like, we put that year in, and the year that we put in, I believe we, we got a pretty good fan base. Uh, out there, and uh, and when they signed us for the next year, they upped the contract and they and they they gave us a lot more booking. So I believe we've uh, made our stay pretty well there. And as far as Mark Briscoe smelling, yeah, <laughs> wicked nemesis, come on board. Now, gentlemen, uh, now, now, gentlemen, uh, Chris Coleman is very well known uh, throughout uh, the Southeast as one of the best talkers. Uh, a, a gentleman that. With the Griffey, the Green Horns, really want to watch the promos. Now, since you yourself are also known in the Southeast, how did it feel uh, being with a veteran that is uh, Caprice Coleman and yourself that had made you go quite a few for yourself? How how does it feel being put together? Uh, for such a, it doesn't bother me because if you think about Ring Bonifile, I've been I've been repping. I mean, of course, been a singles for a long, long time, but a job is a job, you know, and I think tagging with somebody like Cedric, you know, he's a lot younger than I am, but he's like a hybrid, so actually with, with me tagging with him, I'm actually learning, like, more of the Ring of Honor style, because I have my own style that I kind of, like, you know, uh, attached uh, myself to, and also hanging around Cedric and the Ring of Honor guys, kind of, like, uh, getting more on, on that, uh, that style, so I can kind of do my thing, do this thing, do whatever I can do, so it kind of... Uh, it, it makes me better, I believe. And then yeah, I think it's uh, saving us too because we have the thing with the, the tag team things we do. But I still think eventually, somewhere down the line, we still have a single career that we can uh, we can go into as well. So I believe it's just added longevity uh, onto our career. And I believe even with me tagging with him, I'm still like holding my craft uh, on this national level, you know, international level, to where you know it's making me better a as well. And with Caprice being, you know, so good on the mic, that's really helping me uh, develop uh, vocal skills because before Caprice, I was never a talker whatsoever. But now that I'm, you know, like you said, helping him out with uh, the Ring of style and, and all that, this and that, he's really, really helping me bring my my personality out in front of people besides, you know, being the guy who can do, you know, all kinds of cool stuff in the ring. Now, this is one thing that I've had, that I really wanted to ask, and I'm glad I get the opportunity. Um, having worked in the indie circuit, I really hate to use that term, um, for as long as both of y'all have. And you get to some promotions where, whether it's a tag match or a singles match, oh, go five, six, seven minutes. Oh, go 10, 11 minutes. And you go to ROH, and it's, you're going 19, 20, 25 minutes in a tag team match. How do you adjust your psychology much less the physicality when you're getting ready to go into an ROH match and you're working that much longer of a match. Caprice, I'll ask you first. Well, I think I think that's what that's what made it not a big deal for us being singles wrestlers because with us having that single wrestler cardio, 
were able to do that because basically when we have longer matches like that, it helps us show uh, our individuality as well, you know, and then we can also bring that cohesiveness together as a unit with a tag team. So with it being a longer match, it just helps us both be able to uh, put our own uh, twist on things to make it like a, 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 a single thing, you know, where people know each other separately. You know, they know what I can do, they know what he can do, they know what to expect from me, they know what to expect from him. And then when we come together uh, as a cohesive unit, you know, we bring uh, our tag team stuff and combine. So, and it's actually, I enjoy it more because it's like, at some level, you know, in some shows or whatever, seven minutes is probably all they need uh, to make the show look good. I mean, to make, you know, to, uh, because after seven minutes, things probably fall apart. But with Ring of Honor, you know, after 15, 20 minutes, people want more, you know? Understand the concept, Cedric. Would you like to add on to that? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, on the regular indie scene, where you know they say you got all right, you got ten, eleven minutes, make this work with a lot of my time frame. The thing about it, you really get to tell more of a story. The psychology there is is way more advanced than it would be on the regular indie scene. Ring of Honor, you you have you have the time, the ability to tell this complex story where. When it comes to being on, you know, random shows in Tennessee or North Carolina, that you know, you just have to rush, 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 get through, get through it. But um, as far as the physicality goes, man, uh, Ring of Honor is far and none the hardest hitting company in the world. And once you've been at Ring of Honor for a year, like we have, you know, being in the type of matches we have been in, uh, being on an indie it's kind of like all of it, all of you awkward. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. You can't hit harder than that. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Mabo, come on in. Um, now this question's uh, for both of you, gentlemen. Uh, before you came on the air with us uh, in the previous segment, we were discussing uh, Nigel McGinnis, you know, taking over. And uh, just in your own opinion, as compared to the the old guard, how do you think Nigel has done so far? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say this right quick. Um, we're like next, so we got probably like three minutes left. Uh, I don't want to cut you off, and I'm just letting you know ahead of time. Okay. Uh, or because the, the match from before is up now. We're actually getting ready to wrestle. But um, did you finish your question? Uh, yeah, just how you think Nigel, how, well, what kind of job do you think Nigel's done so far compared to what Mr. Cornetta did? I, I like Cornette and I like Nigel too. I think the difference between the two is Cornette had more of a uh, uh, a, a business uh, standpoint of how the, the business uh, is run, you know, how to run business-wise matches, uh, making cards and all that, and Nigel has more uh, of knowledge of experience, you know, of being in the ring uh, type. So I feel that with the change, I believe it's a good change because Nigel is kind of like uh, – the person that's been in the ring so he knows what we can do, what what's fair to us, what's not fair to us, and what's to be expected out of us. Instead of just throwing two people together, he, he knows the, people's chemistry, you know, their abilities and all, and he's able to make matches to where he, people are going to buy uh, to be there. You know? And I, I have nothing bad to say about Jim Cornette as well. I mean, I, I, I was happy, we're happy to be there and all, but I do see a difference to where, you know, Jim Cornette is kind of like, hey, put these guys with these guys, this would be a great thing, but it's up. But uh, I believe Nigel is more of, you know, trying to bring honor back in the ring of honor. So a lot of the matches that, that blew off uh, in the past with no finishes, I think it's out there, you know, now it's going to be like definite finishes uh, from here on out for the most part. Now, I'm going to go, since you're about to have to run, let me go ahead and do this, because in two weeks from today, on the 16th, in New York City, the Manhattan Center, final battle. Doomsday from Ring of Honor. You were a part of a three-way dance tag team challenge for the ROH World Tag Team Titles. The current champion, Steve Carino, and, of course, the Zombie Princess, defending against you, the two of you, CNC, as well as the Briscoe Brothers. Real quick, what are your thoughts going into that matchup right off the top of your head? Uh, Cedric, I'll go to you first. All right, with, uh, with that match, uh, I'm a little nervous being that not only is it a triple threat match for the tag titles, but we're in the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City, you know, um, for me as a fan, that is a very historical place to wrestle in, and we can walk away with the tag champs, yes, and, uh, and that building, yes, it, it doesn't get any better than that in my opinion. And, and with my opinion, I, I, I was talking to Cedric, and I was saying, you know, look at us last year. Last year at Final Battle, we were put into like a, um, a gauntlet match to where it was just pretty much uh, exposing the tag team division and how good our tag team division is. But now, a year later, we're in a main event match, you know, and their teams have been there for years, 
that would love to be where we're at, but I believe we put the work in the way the company sees, hey, these guys are for real. They're not just sugar putting. They're happy to be here and they're going to team get better. So win or lose, I believe we're being taken seriously, but we want to come out with a win. Well, let me go ahead and say this before I let you run. Mabo made the reference to a one-off. I have to sit back and say, when y'all debuted, it was a walk-off home run. 455 over the center field wall, and it was great to see both of y'all. It's great to have both of y'all on the show. I would love to have y'all come back when you have a little bit more time. Is that cool? That's cool. That's cool. And I, I apologize, man. I, I booked this date, and I didn't think about, uh, I, I forgot about the show that we had this night, man. I, I, I dropped the ball on that, so I take the ball on that one, man. And I feel, I feel like I owe it to you to be able to call that one more time. How's that? We'll hold you to that, guaranteed. Caprice, Cedric, thank you both for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, CNC, internationally known tag team, Caprice Coleman, Cedric Alexander, right here on Beyond Ringside. We're going to go ahead and go to our um, quick break, and we'll be back on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network right after this. Rangers. The music plays, the microphones go hot, and we are back live on a Sunday night. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside, Fast Eddie Lane, back behind the control panel. Welcome back, Mabo, Mark Bowman. He's thinking about creepy clowns while he's taking taco farts. There you go. Wicked Nemesis, come on back in. Dig it. <laughs> you know, we need to, uh, we need to give a big, big shout out to those that are actually listening via Ustream. TeamTDSRadio.net was down for a little bit. It is back up. Thank you to Arison, Dame Christopher, uh, yes. Daryl B. For those of you that listen uh, on a consistent basis. But I want to take an opportunity really quick. Uh, I'm just going to hold this out. Uh, thank you to Caprice and Cedric for coming on. Uh, those guys... As we said, I've known Cedric for a little bit. A lot of those guys do not remember me because they would come into anarchy, you know, kind of randomly. And I would be there, and when they first came in, I was quiet. It wasn't until later on that I really was able to put a foothold down to speak. But I, what I want to talk about really quick is about veterans backstage. We, we talked about this Wednesday night, Eddie, but uh, if I can go off on kind of a rant for a second, and I want to get your take on this, Mabo, because uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to have the same take that I do. When you offer someone advice, uh, when I offer advice to someone, it's usually something that has related to me or something that I see that sticks out so much that I, I can't not say something. Uh, no one cares if you've been in the business five or six years. If you've only worked for one company, if you have only worked once a, once a month, once a week even, uh, during that five years, you're really not at liberty to, to speak up or always have an excuse for something being wrong. Uh, Eddie, you know, we mentioned this. Uh, what happened in Canton, Georgia, yep. uh, with a little incident, uh, I pulled Joey Lightning aside and told him what he did wrong, and I corrected it. Now, you guys saw GCW from uh, from this morning, correct? Most of it, yeah. Oh, I did, yes. Okay. In that match, uh, there was something come up, and there was a, not really, say, a spot blown, but there was something out of sync. Now, Damon Christopher, uh, he and I talked about this, and he's probably going to get pissed that I'm uh, saying it, but I really don't care because it needs to be said. Damon Christopher is a veteran. When you have a veteran of going on 16 years, 16 years, this man's about to have been in the business. And you guys saw the match. I want to get your thoughts on it because it's the first time that Mabel's been able to see the match. And, Eddie, you saw it live, but this is the first time you've been able to see it uh, since then. Right. Uh, there was a first – first of all, first of all, first of all, and Mabel can vouch this. Ted Guinness, I like Ted. Ted's a cool guy. Eddie, I'm going to tell you I'm not the manager of champions. I've never been the man- – I've never claimed to be the manager of champions. The manager of champions is thinking too small for me. I'd rather be the wrangler of the gods. Just saying, just saying, a uh, spiritual advisor, et cetera, et cetera. I don't like that manager of champions because the unlucky charms don't need bells to be relevant. We bring relevance to those titles. Uh, you look at uh, some of the guys, uh, Teddy Chutwiler III and J.P. Magnum. 
held those titles for quite a long time and actually brought a lot of prestige to it. Uh, granted, there were some tag teams at that time that really didn't go up to par to what they thought in their heads they were, but they held the titles when the Usos were there. Uh, they held the title when Bishop was there, and Bishop could have probably just took the title himself. But uh, but you guys saw what happened. Uh, there was a point in time toward Trevor, and I like Trevor. I see a lot of great things. I think Trevor, Eon, and Spiral, I think, are two guys uh, on that roster that are young that I'm telling you guys right now, they should be doing a lot more things than what they are. But I have a problem with Joey Lightning. Uh-huh. My problem with Joey is that Joey, as anybody seen that, throws the worst punch I've ever seen before in my life. When what happened happened, Eddie, and I know you've seen this, and, and you've been talking about us still in the titles. Talking about us still in the titles. When it all got lost, Joey got lost in the ring. Chris Knox got lost. There was a point in time to where they were kind of like, what's going on, what's going on? Uh, there's only so much you can do and keep the realism uh, to not pull back the curtain so much, if you will. Uh, I think that it was handled rightly, and you guys uh, saw the match. The thing about that is, is when the match got restarted for whatever, it, it, as long as I've been a fan, I've been a fan since 1984. The referee's decision is always final, but for some reason, the match was restarted. During that restart, the it should have been Joey and Damon. But once again, you guys missed the fact that it wasn't even the legal man. The legal man wasn't even in this. So all this talk about there being a champion, about you know us still in the titles or whatever, this shouldn't have been a match to begin with. The match ended as such. Eddie, what was the finish of the match? Originally, and it's not even called the Irish Sledgehammer. The Irish Sledgehammer is what it is. It's called the Peter Gabriel. Okay, we don't call it that. It's called an Irish Sledge, just like it was the Polish Hammer when Ivan Putski did it. Right. It's the Irish Sledge Hammer because you have two Irish American that do it. It's right. Peter Gabriel. Right. And I will stay you next time if you don't get it right. <laughs> I believe I have used that line before, matter of fact. I have you, called it the Peter Gabriel. You used it, you used it I said it too during the uh during the Battle Royal, because we all laughed about it on air, really. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> but uh Mabel, I wanted to know your thoughts about the match because Eddie's commissioner, so he has a biased, slanted view. <laughs> what did you think about the match? Shut up. What did you think about the match? Mabel? You saw the the travesty that, that was bestowed, but yet we kept our titles, so I want to know about this one. I mean, I am never one to, to you know, naysay anything you've ever said, Wick, but I saw absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean... I, well, I really got happy because when I, mean, I was watching, you know, I, was, I DVR'd it, um, and I saw you guys were coming up. I was like, "Holy crap! They, they're going to get the whole thirty minutes rest of the show!" And I got really excited too. And then it was like, you know, it was cut short for whatever reason. But honestly, I didn't see anything wrong. I mean, it looked like a, a legitimate, clean victory. You guys rightfully had the titles. Um, that meth head that they employ as the other referee came out with his bad teeth and his skinny arms. Um, he had no business. I don't care who, how long he's been there. Shouldn't have restarted anything or whatever. You guys were the rightful victories. Or, you know, the right, uh, rightful victors. You, you got the titles. And you sh I think you should still have the titles, which I'm pretty sure you do. Yes, we do. That was that was a legitimate victory, and if if meth heads and bow ties would learn to mind their own business, then there wouldn't even had to be a restart. You, you we could have had a larger celebration, but no. So, and here you have Bernie, and Bernie Bernie needs to stick to what he does best, and that's being out of position and dancing in the background. Leave it to such a fine, upstanding individual from a pedigree. Of wrestling, wrestling legacy being Jeff McGowan, Jeffrey McGowan, and all his glory made the one, two, three, rightfully so. And nobody's even acknowledged the fact that Trevor Eon tried to kick my boy Chris Knox's teeth down his throat. Has anybody said anything about that? No, of course not, because we're looking. At, and you know why? It's because they're Irish, and the, fact, and the full throttle are African Americans. 
We have African Americans and Irish Americans. I just don't understand this. When did this become such a race war? And I blame you, Eddie. Oh, great. I must all the racial tension backstage because of you. Because you take well, cigarette breaks. How dare you try to smoke a cigarette in, in, during intermission? I don't understand this. Mabel, you should have been there. You should well, have been, I mean, if Eddie took a minute of his time to smoke a cigarette, how outrageous. Well, first of all, he should just be like any other, you know, self-respecting individual and just smoke while he does it. Here but. I mean, look, look, if the owner of the company could take time to smoke a ham in the middle of, of the show, then Eddie should be able to smoke during the show. But that's beside the point. I, for one, have, uh, you know, been watching the, the GCW show for some time now because, you know, I'm awake at 1 o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep. And, and let's be honest, unless you're on, you know, unless you or your charges are on there, it helps me fall right to sleep. But in the time... But that, you know, I mean, come on, it's so vanilla, it's ridiculous. Uh, you guys are the chocolate sprinkles that make that vanilla show that much better. Um, but in the time, I have watched one Jefferson Davis McGowan referee. And he's been a fine upstanding referee. You know, I believe it's his father's the one with the skullet. Yes. And yes, sir. Anyone, anyone birthed from the loins of, of a person with a skullet? It's obviously always going to be on the up and up. They're going to make the right judgment calls. They're not skinny anorexic meth heads with bad teeth who, you know, apparently... And it's, and it's very obvious that, you know, Methy Kawanowitz sits there and, 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 and cheers for all the good guys. If you don't believe me, watch any episode. He's always clapping and dancing for him like the little butt monkey that he is. Back into so, the left. Back into the left. I'm telling you. So, if you don't believe me, go review all the footage. Last night, for example, uh, I believe I forgot what match it was, but I was I was watching it. And Hello, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was the new guy, the new guy. Which, by the way, um, it's okay if you want to start off the match with 18 arm drags. That's fine. Whatever, Mister Barbecue Jake Cole or whatever your name is. Um, but yeah, he was sitting there clapping and dancing and shuffling his little feet like. You know, yeah. apparently he couldn't, you know, get his bump he needed before the match. So, yeah, I mean, any, I, I, personally, I mean, I know this isn't GCW radio that's uh, to come later on tonight, but how can you, as a self-respecting commissioner and, 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 and an individual, first of all, let a meth head, let a meth head be the senior referee, and then let someone show such horrid disregard and impartiality towards the good guys of Global Championship Wrestling, and then you sit there and you have such slander and allegations towards Wicked Nemesis, saying that he and the Unlucky Charms stole the belt. How can you do that? And still what? smoke a cigarette. He said Grand Theft, and he said this on my own radio show twice. Twice he's been on my radio show, which, congratulations, by the way, uh, Fast Eddie Lane, the Magic City Motor Mouth, is actually uh, our new third will, if you will, <laughs> on uh, the To Be Determined show right here on this very station. So, how and dare it probably, you? It, it, it probably kills him to actually have to be, you know, because normally it's him and his ego, and then everybody else is in third and fourth wheel. So it must really hurt him to have to be, you know, play, play, you know, third wheel to you guys. But that's beside the point. How dare you? How can you live with yourself? You have yet to answer the questions, Edward. How? How can you live with yourself? You've got Methy McMetherson clapping and dancing for the faces, sitting there letting him overturn freaking decisions. And, let, and yet you obviously have issues with those who are of Irish-American and Bohemian descent. And you accuse them. Why? What? Because they have tattoos? Because they have mohawks? Because they don't fit in your lexicon? Is that why you choose them? accuse them of stealing the belts? Huh? Why? What? Is it because when you were younger, and when I say younger, you were only in your 80s when House of Pain was out? Did you not like the House of Pain? Could you not jump around because you're of your authoritic, you know, authoritic hip? Why, Eddie? Why do you have something against them? And why did you let Matthew McMatherson overturn a decision he had no business being involved in? Well, folks, that's all the time we have for this evening. I want to thank you for joining. <laughs> not to say, am I going to get the chance to actually respond? No, you're not. You know why? Because all you're going to do is sit there and come up with more lies. You're going to make lies, excuses, lies, excuses, lies, excuses, and it's going to be a big lie excuse lasagna. 
Who are these people? Now. So go ahead. Answer yourself. Answer for yourself. Number one. And another thing. How dare you? How dare you? Take a cigarette. Don't you know cigarettes are the leading cause of smoke other than burning wood? Have you ever lit a cigarette? It smokes. People don't need smoke. What are you contacting? Small Native Americans? Are you sending out smoke signals? What are you doing? Are you, the the, are you hoping the embers fall down and Wayne Zelensky's small shrunken children can use them to heat themselves in the middle of the night while fending off scorpions inside of a giant Lego? Is that why you smoke, Eddie? Why do you smoke? Answer me that. And why is it that Ted Guinness happens to be the one all the time with all the funny puns? I remember back when you were a funny guy. What's happened to you, Eddie? Have you lost your mojo? I know what it is. We need to have that talk. And another thing. Why is it that whenever Ted, what is it, McGainis, whatever, is on the screen, he looks like a glazed ham? Why does he sweat so much? Is he, is he sick? Does he, does he have diphtheria? What, what's, what is wrong with him? Has he not had his shots? Why is he, he's, what is wrong with him? He's kin to Carl Rose. Well, that makes sense. Do you, what, what do you have to say for yourself, Edward? The truth of the matter is that I am not, nor have ever been, pregnant. And why is it you're, and why is it you're stealing from, from the Claire Lynch storyline, which freaking WWE stole from TNA, and then TNA turned and stole right back from the WWE? Why, Eddie? What is with all the stealing? Is it because Missy Kiwana Crackhead is sitting there as the senior official and he accuses freaking the unlucky charm? Damon Christopher. I have known Damon Christopher for weeks and weeks. <laughs> Not once has he ever stolen anything. You know what he stole? You know what he stole? He stole my heart. You know why? Because he's a fine upstanding citizen. He's a, uh, 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 a pillar in the Irish American community. What are you going to say for yourself, Edward Lainage? Are you three working directly for WWE champion CM Punk? Nope. If I was, if I was, I am sure one Cookie Monster Punk would agree with me that stick figure Kiwanowitz and his mess head teeth was wrong in overturning that. Also, Punk would agree that Lita's boobs are really nice. And the third thing, Pop would agree that The Shield was a stupid name for the group and that the Unlucky Charms are the rightful and God-given champions of Global Championship Wrestling. Can I get an amen and a hallelujah? ROH is back, baby! This is ROH and honor lives! That made no sense. Eddie, at least use the clip sticking with what we're talking about. You don't have Caprice Coleman saying hallelujah? If not, we should have. I can get that. Well, you should have answered answer, answer, answer these questions, Eddie. Come on. Every time I try to, you end up trying to overrun me all over again, which I'm used to getting. Ready. I would never overrun anybody, Eddie. Anybody who has listened to the history of this show in the past two years it's been back, maybe three, I'm not Four. sure. Never once, never once have I sat there and interrupted anybody. I'm the one that's always getting interrupted. And have I ever said anything about it? No. You know why? Because I know my spot. And unlike other people who don't know their spots, Crackhead Kornowitz, I know when to sit there and let things go. It was a legitimate match. Freaking Unlucky Charms won. By the way, Wicked, kudos on their ring attire. It looks wonderful. And their masks, I must say, goes very well on TV. I actually have a, a, a high-definition 32-inch TV in the living room. I watched it on that. It's phenomenal, I must say. And you, sir, looking dapper as ever. But, Eddie, why? Why is it that in this day and age... Irish Americans are discriminated against in global championship wrestling and accused of stealing. Why? What? Are, are you saying because, ooh, because they eat potatoes and, and, and drink whiskey and all that? They must be thieves. So why is that, Eddie? Why? Commissioner. W Wicked. Wicked. Yes, sir. The tag team currently known as the Lucky Charms. Unlucky I mean, the, Charms. The get it right. I'm oh, on. my God. Eric. I'm on. Two. And action. So. Wicked. Yes, sir. The tag team currently known as the Unlucky Charms. Chris Knox, Damon Christopher, led by their spiritual advisor, the Wicked Nemesis, 
And I had to use your shoot name of the Wicked Nemesis. That's right. Are you currently recognized as the GCW World Tag Team Champions? Yes, we are. Okay, end of discussion. <laughs> but still, you were on my show twice and, and try to bury me. Not even well, the commissioner. I'm taking my commissioner hat off. It's still crapped on me. You walked in my house and crapped on my rug. And what, what am I supposed to do? I've had the, uh, the, the watch. That's what happens when you try to give me Mabo's tacos. For two years. You, you, you know, every time he, he wanted the watch, he would look at this watch and he would stick it up his ass. And he was stealing it for you. You sound like Travolta. Keep going. <laughs> oh, 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 we're doing Travolta? Hey, wicked, <laughs> wicked, wicked. What? Where? Where? Boom. 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 Okay. Eddie, it took you it took you that long to give us that probably typed out, you know, from the front office that typed out ready little statement that you just read. Are they really well, let me ask you this, the tag team on his own like the terms. Are they uh, not recognized the global temperature rather Okay, here's right. your, here's the reader's digest condensed version. On the original viewing of the match, it appeared that the wrong person was pinned. Upon further review of the situation, Kawanowitz was wrong. The match should not have been restarted. The final decision should have stood as it was. The proper person was pinned. The, um, the reigning, the as of that moment, and reigning GCW World Tag Team Champions are the unlucky charms. And as damn well they should be. Don't you hate it when I... Don't, being, on the, being on the radio every week with a legend, and now to have to deal with my ego twice. And as Mabo said... The encapsulated form, which I like to call my penis, uh, the encapsulated form is a simple fact that now you have to put up with me, myself, I, Tasha, Tasha's ego. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, we have a lot of time to talk about GCW and how wrong you are. Your name is now Toby. Not Kunta, Toby. I'm going to cut your leg off. Run, Toby, run. Now, First off, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be joined in approximately 15 minutes from uh, by David Elder from Strike Hard Productions. They are going to be hosting SHP Strike Hard Productions 20 on next Saturday night, December the 8th, at in Birmingham, Alabama, at the Zamora Shrine Temple. Looking forward to that. And also joining us at the top of the hour, in addition to David, will be professional MMA, or excuse me, will be mixed martial artist Eric Anders. Now... Friends of ours from the home state of Alabama are going to recognize the name of Eric, E-R-Y-K Anders, because Eric Anders was on the 2009 Alabama Crimson Tide National Championship team, so I'm going to get a chance to ask Eric how he feels um, firsthand about the University of Alabama Crimson Tide going back to the National Championship game for the third time in four years. In and addition... You know, if you ask him that, what? you're a mark. Don't ask him that. Don't ask him that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, heck yeah, boy, let me tell you something right now. Yeah, we're getting Notre Dame. I give you, I give 15 minutes for one of these guys drops, drops the F-bomb. I know fighters, I know mis, mixed martial arts. Chris Knox doesn't say much on TV, Eddie. And you know the man's 72 and 9 in his professional career. Legit. And the man cusses more than I do. I'm just saying. That's hard for me to believe, Wick. <laughs> Kudos, but kudos to bringing on 15 mixed martial arts. I didn't realize there were 15 mixed martial arts without the name Bubba or Johnny Ray Bob in their name somewhere in Alabama. So kudos to that. That is a hell of a, a statement right there. By the way, you're, people, still, you're still playing. Sure what just happened. They may be scared to come on with us. By the way, you may, you're still trying to come to the show next week, right? Yes, I am. Okay, good. I got you covered. Mabel, you want to go? You got me covered. Yeah, as far what as tickets that? go. What did you? I'm a legend. You should have me covered. I'm the reason why this this dot com still afloat. You didn't know that. Wait a minute. Which dot com? <laughs> I'm the I'm the breakout star of this of this this house. I thought you called Mabo the breakout star. He's the breakout star of the show. I'm the breakout star of this house. Ah, uh, okay. And I actually read Entertainment Weekly. For those that don't know, Entertainment Weekly, August 2010. <laughs> uh, they were talking about podcasts. On that, when they were talking about podcasts, they actually mentioned Mark Bowman as started to look out for in 2011. And then Mark started growing his hair and started giving a crap about people for a little bit. For a little bit, he started you know, giving a crap people, and, and he, you know, he kind of fell off. But I'm here to announce that I'm sure in Entertainment Weekly's podcast to look out for in 2013, 
I'm pretty sure it's going to say Fast Eddie Lane and the Ohio State Fairgrounds. Oh. I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd do it. I knew you'd do it. <laughs> You will never let that one go when you know something. That's cool. Oh, I just cut my pants a little bit. Yeah, you and your semen stained tacos there, buddy. Long time. And I know I have an ego, so who cares? You can say whatever you want to about me. It's probably true. See, this is where... covered tacos. This is where I'm going to go ahead and just lay this one out on the line. Because in all reality, Wicked Nemesis has no ego. He is one of the hardest working people in this industry. Granted, he is very outspoken. He is very... Shut up. Let me talk. I don't work hard. I don't work hard. Working hard is for suckers. I work smart, Eddie. I'm saying, okay. He is still one of the hardest working and smartest working people in this industry. Granted, he is very outspoken. Granted, he is very opinionated. Granted, he has probably pissed off half of Twitter at least one point in time during the last year. But you know something? When the apples are apples, oranges are oranges, and we'll take the fruit stand theory straight into play. If there is one person behind a microphone that deserves, and I mean flat out freaking deserves, to be on national television, it is the gentleman that I proudly call co-host of this show, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. And I will say this, my other tag team partner on this show, and there's no 1A, 1B, They're, we're all slot one. We're partners on this show. But Mark Maybo Bowman, I guarantee you this. When the time finally comes and the situ- the right situation really presents itself to him, you will find out not only is he the breakout star in this house, but he is also probably a hell of a lot more than y'all anybody gave him credit for, which actually, I'll tell you the truth, is going to surpass a lot of expectations because people speak very highly of you out there, Mark. And that's a shoot, dude. You no, know, they don't. Yeah, they do. I don't need you to butter my biscuit. Butter the biscuit. Now, as we're going 10 minutes before the top of the hour, see, here's the thing about it. And we have a lot of fun on this show in a number of different ways. And I want to thank them for running the part of this segment that they did because they know that I've been sick as ever loving crap over here. And I asked both of them, it's like, dude, if you hear me start to cough, step up, take it over, do what you got to do. And... Lo and behold, they did. And that's why these two guys are genuinely A-list in anybody's book. And if they're not, I'll kick your freaking ass, all right? Plain and simple on that one. Um, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. We got somebody coming in. Hold on. I got a call coming in. Uh, hold on. Let me, I need to confirm this. Eddie? Eddie, yeah. we, we have on the phone. Really? Music legend, David Bowie. Nice. Yay. Hold on. And 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 he, what is it? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'll patch him in through the through the board here in just a second. He is he's he's wanting to wish you well because he knows you've been sick. So he he, he just wanted to uh, come on real quick and just you know wish you well and, and and. Well, ladies and gentlemen, music legend David Bowie here on Beyond Ringside. Fast Daddy, I heard you were sick. Fast Daddy, I heard you were sick. Fast Daddy, I heard you were sick. Really, really, really sick. Heard you crapped your pants today. Heard you crapped your pants today. That's no way for you to live. Hope you get better soon, Fast Daddy. And knowing David Bowie like I do, he's probably already signed off the telephone, so I would like to say thank you very much for uh, David Bowie coming on with us here on Beyond Ringside tonight. Um, <laughs> appreciate the song, dude. It's going to go to number one. In the words of one of my favorite comedians over the last ten years, you know, mention me on your album and it'll go aluminum. So, yes, I just used a Larry the Cable Guy reference there. We're going eight minutes before the top of the hour, and gentlemen, just in case y'all decide to uh, bail, because I know Walking Dead's about an hour away, but I know we're also going to be shifting gears going into the next segments. I'm going to go and open up the doors. Mark Bowman, last call. Oh, I mean, I'll stick around until after the, the strike card thing or whatever. Okay, cool. I'll listen in, just don't. But, uh, yeah, so if, if Wicked needs to go ahead and do to do, do, then he can go ahead. Okay, Wicked. Oh, uh... <clears throat> I guess I'll go ahead and get back because I don't know when I'll be able to get off. Uh, first of all, the To Be Determined show, Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, on this very URL, this very website, being TNT-Radio 
www.thetwoworldsmusicgroup.net. Also, you can check out some archived versions of the To Be Determined show, Beyond Ringside, and Shoot Finish on my YouTube, Wicked Nemesis Enoch. Uh, I hope you guys can check it out. Uh, some old times for us guys. Yeah, over there. Hey, hey. Whoa, what happened? Hey, what happened? Hey, was that guys? Was that guys? Wicked, go ahead. Keep going. I'm hearing guys yeah. echo ahead, so I will go ahead and see this. David, well, Chris, thank you for coming on, Cedric. Thank you for coming on as quick as you did. I know you guys were going right to the ring. I think that's the first time I've ever done an interview with you to shoot the ring. So uh, thank you guys for that. Make sure you check out Cherry Awful of NWA Top Rope will be on the Meet the Show this week. I do want to say... Go out and support the local wrestling. Uh, this Saturday, besides uh, the MMA mega event that's going to be going on in Birmingham, also UAW Universal Independent Wrestling will be in North Carolina, Georgia, uh, with a decent card. So go out and check those guys out. Go out and check out any independent wrestling around yourself. I will take this whole event here. To tell everybody once again, thank you and welcome to the To Be Determined show. Looking forward to it. Wednesday nights, definitely a blast as well. Um, you know, all the way across the board. Um, simulcasting on TNT-Radio.net, of course, running through Ustream, um, our regular Ustream channel replays being handled through Beyond Ringside 24-7 through BeyondRingside.com. Folks, we're going to go ahead and head to our top of the hour break a little bit early. And like I said, when we come back, we're going to be joined by David Elder from Strike Hard MMA, as well as... MMA fighter and former member of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Eric Anders, and a number of the fighters scheduled to join us on the Strike Hard 20 show next Saturday night in Birmingham. And we'll be back on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network right after this. <laughs> 